I am honored to be speaking in front of you all today. And to be honest, when Lauren initially emailed me saying that several of my classmates nominated me to speak at our graduation dinner, would I like to accept? My first thought was, oh great, more work. <laughs> but to be fair, it wouldn't be an MD PhD degree if you weren't working to the very last day of medical school. I know this because many of my classmates here are still working on papers, finishing up projects, or have started entirely new ones. In all seriousness, thank you for honoring me with the opportunity to share a few words tonight. I want to start with one of my favorite quotes in life, one that has provided me solace and quiet motivation during my time at Harvard. It only ends once. Anything else that happens before that is just progress. This quote is from one of my favorite TV shows, Lost. And to me, it perfectly describes the goal of the MD-PhD training and what today represents for us graduates. We started this journey seven, eight, nine, ten, even 11 years ago, many of us fresh-faced, excited, and energetic. We came to Harvard with ideas on how we want to combine research and medicine. We also came to Harvard with no clue of exactly what we were getting ourselves into. To start with the most obvious point, the MD-PhD career path is long, like really long. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure many of us have had that experience when you are home for the holidays and an extended family member asks you what you're doing now, to which you respond, I'm in school, and they reply with, still? <laughs> for years, and especially during the PhD years, there doesn't appear to be a light at the end of the tunnel. Instead, it feels like we're walking down a long, dark corridor, waiting for light any light to appear at the end to comfort us and signal that we're on the right path. This time of uncertain exploration is where PhDs experience much personal growth. It's during this time we learn to believe in ourselves and in our work, partly because if we don't, the PhD simply won't happen. It was during this time I found solace in a quote, it only ends once, anything else that happens before that is just progress. I had to believe that every day I went into lab, Every PCR, the countless mini preps, failed experiments, and negative data was part of the process and was indeed progress, even if it didn't feel that way. The importance of getting up and working on a hard problem did more than just to build character. It gave me confidence that, I put, that if I put my mind to something and worked diligently for years, I could push the boundary of knowledge forward. What our PhDs represent is the culmination of hard work, brilliance, and perseverance and I am so proud of that accomplishment for all of us. It's, no, it's one that none of, no one can ever take away. The MD training has been equally rewarding and honestly, quite humbling. My fellow graduates know that feeling of returning to the hospital after being years away and thinking to ourselves, what have I gotten myself into again? Mm -hmm. This degree is filled with transitions and returning to medical school after the PhD was, let's just say, Rough. But after a few weeks, maybe months, we get used to the rhythm and flow of the hospital. We learn how to work on teams, and we are entrusted to take care of patients. This last part is the true gift of the program. For my PhD, I studied the pathogen Mycobacterium obsessus, where I peered into the bacteria's genome to uncover secrets on how it builds its cell wall and resists antibiotics. But it wasn't until I met and took care of my first patient with an obsessive infection did the power of our training crystallize. To practice medicine, to take care of patients, is a blessing. So is witnessing the limitations of medicine and imagining the ways that we can push medicine forward. To think of those questions, conjure up experiments, work to do better by patients, to me, is the beauty of the MD-PhD. I'm grateful to have this training and all these years later, I can stand in front of you all today and confidently say, it was worth it. Thank God. <laughs> As we end this chapter of our journeys and embark on new ones, I am again drawn to the line, it only ends once. Anything else that happens before that is just progress. The key word I want to focus on here is progress. What does progress mean to me? Progress means dreaming big and dreaming on because nothing exists in life that didn't start off as a dream or vision first, whether it be a new invention, new treatment, or a completely new theory to explain the world. We dream it first, then work hard, then own it. 
Progress means pushing forward against all odds and all obstacles, because the difference between a dream realized and a dream deferred is the distance we are willing to travel and the grit we are demonstrate to get the job done. And most importantly, progress means caring about the future and the lives of our fellow human beings. Because we work to build a better world, not only for us and our contemporaries, but also for the people and patients who will come after us, people who will build upon our successes and push humanity forward to even higher and greater heights. This is how we go from, this, from the discovery of DNA in the 1860s to identifying its structure in the 1950s to directly editing genomes and curing genetic diseases in the 2020s. I became a scientist because I'm inspired by that continual progressive march. So to the graduating MD-PhD class of 2022, and soon to be degreed members of the scientific and medical communities, we have been privileged with the training to help fashion this progress, to lead the march of science and medicine forward. This work is tough, it's hard, at times rewarding, but many more times frustrating. Still, I have the utmost confidence that my friends in this room will be the engines pushing humanity forward. For as long as we have our goals defined with crystal clear clarity, coupled with dogged determination and grit, everything we do before reaching that goal, anything that happens before that goal, is progress. So to wrap up this speech, I want to end with a few thank yous. In truth, I lied when I described our career path as a dark tunnel with no light in sight for years. In reality, there have always been lights in the tunnel in the form of guidelines, illuminating the way and pointing us to the right direction. One of the most important lights in our journeys are our mentors. My mentor, Eric Rubin, has been the guiding light in the journey towards becoming a a physician scientist. I have grown immeasurably as a trainee due to your guidance and steadfast belief in me. Thank you for being an excellent role model and most importantly, a great person. And to, and to all the mentors in the room who couldn't make it and those who couldn't make it, thank you for being the guiding lights in our journeys. Let's give them a hand. Second, I want to thank the black and brown physicians and scientists who have come before and paved the way for students of color like me to be in an institution like this and thrive. Our numbers in the profession are disproportionately small, but I am hopeful that over time they will grow and that every student, regardless of who they are and where they come from, has the ability to have their potential be greeted with opportunity. I next want to thank everyone at the MD-PhD office starting first with Lauren, our feelers leader. You inject so much fire and passion into the program. It's hard for we trainees not to catch the fire ourselves. Your knack for on the fly delivering inspirational speeches is seriously Oscar worthy. We thank you so much for being our fiercest advocate. The MD-PhD office, Jen, Jonathan, former members of the office, Amy and Robin, and the rest of the staff who I haven't had the pleasure to meet yet. You manage a complex program that interacts with the medical school, various graduate schools at Harvard and MIT, multiple hospitals, and to top it all off, the NIH. And it all works. Thank you for ensuring that there was always a sturdy structure in place to ensure our success. Finally, I want to thank the families in the room. To my siblings, thank you for being there for me, providing laughs, opportunities to vent, for being fun and inspiring. We've been rooting for each other since day one, and I am beyond blessed to have you all in my life. And I'm still looking forward to the day that one of you can consistently beat me in banana grass. <laughs> <laughs> And finally, to my parents. 32 years ago today, on May 25th, 1990, my father landed in JFK from Lagos, Nigeria. Yes. He came to this country seeking to build a better life for his family, both at, both at home in Nigeria and here in the United States. 
Two years later, my mom and I joined him, and together, my parents worked and sacrificed everything to provide opportunity to me and my siblings. They not only stressed the importance of education, they lived it themselves, both studying to become nurses while raising four young children in a new country. Some of my earliest childhood memories is reading the captions on the figures of my dad's nursing textbooks, or helping my mom type her school essays that she would handwrite first. I am standing on this stage as a direct result of your example and the culmination of the American dream you both held tight, cherished, and worked hard for decades to realize. Thank you, Mommy and Dad. And to all the parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and extended family and audience, thank you for all that you have done to raise us, for the love that you poured into us, and for supporting us when your crazy kids went off to Harvard Medical School to start an eight year long plus degree. <laughs> Tonight, we've reached one end, and we appreciate you, we love you, and we thank you for inspiring our progress. On behalf of the MD PhD class of 2022, thank you.